Well, good evening, all. Uh, we find in Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 7, an, an account of some who had gone to the tomb of Jesus to perform customary burial rites for his body. And they find that he's not there. Now read this text and then we'll discuss a few things about it. But again, that's Luke chapter 24, verses one through seven. It says, now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of Jesus or of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. I'm certain that we're all familiar with this passage. Also with the arrest of Jesus and with his mock trial and his torture and his crucifixion. But have we considered the significance of the three days which he was dead? According to Jewish timekeeping, they held that a day began an evening. We can find this pattern in Genesis 1 throughout each day of the creation account. The morning and the evening, or the evening and the morning were the first day, and on from there. They also considered a portion of a day to be a full day. Again, this is just how they reckoned time. So just to break this down, Jesus was dead for three days. Day one would be Friday afternoon, which would be the day before the Sabbath, Mark chapter 15, verse 42. The second day would be Friday evening through Saturday afternoon. And day three would be Saturday night through Sunday morning. Jesus was put to death and his body lay in the tomb for three days, after which he was resurrected. What is the significance of this three-day period of time? I would like for us to study that in the few moments that we have. First and foremost, Jesus said that he would be resurrected in three days. Jesus foretold that this would happen, that he would rise from the dead on the third day. Matthew chapter 16, verse 21. Matthew chapter 27, verse 63. John chapter 2, verses 18 through 22. And he would go on to compare himself to Jonah. And this passage is Matthew chapter 12, verses 38 through 40, which reads as follows. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall be no sign given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So we see the account of Jonah meant something in the future. And Jesus here is really applying that type. We can find the account of Jonah being swallowed by this great fish in Jonah chapter 1, verse 17, through chapter 2, verse 10. Now, some have pointed to Hosea chapter 6, verses 1 through 3, as a prophecy of the resurrection of Christ. And if that is indeed the case, this is likely the passage that uh, Paul refers to in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 4. But nonetheless, Jesus prophesied that he would indeed rise from the dead on the third day. Secondly, 
This was done to prove that he had actually died in the first place. Three days would most definitely allow for news to spread of his death. There was a small crowd that witnessed his crucifixion. They witnessed the spear that pierced his side, John chapter 19, verse 34. And while those who looked on him knew he was dead, others would not because they weren't there. Now, his crucifixion, the place of his crucifixion was for the public's eye. So passersby would no doubt be able to see his body. But as far as the crowd there, you know, there's a whole host of folks that would not have actually seen him and his dead body upon the cross. A three-day time period would definitely allow for this news to spread. Now, according to Jewish culture, specifically in the first century, this would benefit them because they held, uh, according to their tradition, um, a peculiar thing, I would say. This three-day death period would be significant to them because they held that the soul would leave the body uh, after three days to 12 months. The soul of an individual who had died would supposedly hover around the body because it's confused, doesn't know exactly what's going on. So after this period of three days to 12 months, eventually that spirit, that soul of the individual that had died would depart to Gehenna. And then after another 12 months, that soul would permanently rest in the afterlife. Again, that's part of Jewish culture. So this pattern for cultural accommodation can also be seen in the account of Lazarus in John chapter 11, verses 38 through 44. It says, Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou should also see the glory of God? Verse 41, Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And, it, and he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. And Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. The point made here is that Lazarus was indeed dead. They all recognize this fact. He was dead for four days to the point that it was suspected he was already stinking. No one could deny the fact that Lazarus was dead. Thus, this three-day period of time would establish that fact. It would also add depth to the miracle that had taken place for the resurrection of Lazarus. The three-day period of time, really four-day period of time in this instance, show that he was truly raised from, raised from the dead. Now, this same type of accommodation would no, no doubt be applied to the death and resurrection of Jesus. It allowed time and that culture to recognize that his spirit had left his body and that the body was truly dead. And third, it signified the emergence of a new life. Jesus was crucified during the observance of the Passover. <clears throat> this was a feast commanded by God for Israel, and it was used to commemorate their deliverance from Egypt and Egyptian bondage. This was done in preparation for the final plague upon Egypt, which was death of the firstborn. They were to prepare a lamb. They were to sacrifice this lamb, and then they were to use its blood to smear it around 
are on the lintel and the side posts of the door. This blood would show that those in the house were faithful to the Lord, and he would thereby pass over that house, sparing all those in that house. Thus, the sacrifice of the innocent lamb provided safety for all those that were inside the house during this Passover event in Egypt. The final plague upon Egypt ushered, ultimately, their escape, thus providing a new life away from captivity and leading Israel really on a journey to the wilderness. We also see that Jesus is our sacrificial lamb. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 7. We find in John chapter 1, verse 29, where John the baptizer called him the Lamb of God, which would take away the sins of the world. Jesus, in death, through his sacrifice, became the propitiation for our sins. He was the adequate payment to stay the wrath of God for us. Romans chapter 3, verse 25. 1 John chapter 2, verse 2, and 1 John chapter 4, verse 10. Due to his sacrifice, all those who obey him are able to become a new creature. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 21, which reads, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, obviously speaking of the apostles, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made righteousness of God in him. So the death of Christ allows this to be possible. The individual, upon obedience to the, the gospel of Christ, becomes a new creation a new creature. His resurrection would eventually bring the church. On Pentecost, the apostles preached the first recorded gospel sermon. On that day, 3,000 souls were saved. Each and every one of them were added to the church. Acts chapter 2, verse 47. This then, new, or at the time, the newly formed church is the body of the saved. Only those who are found therein have access to eternal life. Just like that Passover lamb that provided the blood for the doorposts, the blood of Christ allows those within the house of God to be recipients of eternal life. We find in, in the resurrection of Jesus, he was proven to be sinless. Death itself could not hold him. Christians then have the same hope for the future. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. The victory of Jesus over death shows that we will, well, what will happen to the Lord's faithful as foretold in Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. So in conclusion, we know that Jesus Christ walked this earth. We knew where we know that he was crucified and he was dead for three days. But then he was resurrected on the third day. And these events provided evidence for the fact of him being God in the flesh. It proved that he was the conqueror of both sin and death. And he had established the fact that him and him alone would be the savior of mankind. The three-day sign of Jonah shows Jesus to, to be the Messiah. Acts chapter 2, verses 23 through 32. Thus, the significance of his three-day death, or period of being dead, and then the resurrection upon the third day. I appreciate your time. Hopefully, this was a beneficial study. Thank you.